Hi, and welcome to the Heroes of Marketing Cloud, the show where we interview Salesforce Marketing Cloud experts. I'm Anthony, I'm the co-founder and CEO of DSelect, and I'll be your host for today. And today we'll be talking with Jenna Metzen. Jenna is one of the co-founders of How to SMC and has an extensive track record working with Marketing Cloud. We'll be discussing direct mail, custom built in Marketing Cloud, the role of community, as well as AI. So welcome, and let's, let's just jump straight in. Hey, Jenna, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. It's uh, such a pleasure to have you here. How have you been since Connections? Good, busy, busy, but very good. I, I like to keep things busy. Keep Great. on my toes. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I uh, really appreciate the time you've taken off your busy schedule to be here with us today. And um, talking of busy, you've had a very busy career up to this point and you know, still very active. I see you're currently engaged at multiple projects, which is very cool. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your trek and um, also what drove you to establish how to SFMC? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've been doing this like my whole life. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that sounds funny to say, but I kind of have um, my, I grew up, um, my dad owned it, owned, owned it, owned a uh, trade bindery. And that's basically, they work in the printing industry. So I started telling I started telling his folders when I was 11, collecting direct mail pieces that were being shipped all over the country, um, uh, you know, when I was 11. So I, I I feel like I've come to this naturally, kind of organically. Um, the, you know, next in my career is I, I did a short, I did a short stint in college and dropped out, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you heard my, if you're at my talk at connections this past year you heard all about that so i'm going to skip over that stuff but um so you're the proverbial tech whiz uh, a high uh you know university or high school dropout <laughs> and i i claim that now I, i've been i was embarrassed about that for a long time whenever i was younger but um now i'm like yeah yeah i'll, I'll claim that i'll accept that you know i'll be you know I'm, I'll, I'll be up there with steve jobs <laughs> <laughs> there you go i love the confidence <laughs> I don't have that confidence. It's totally fake, but um, I, I want to have it. Um, but yeah, so um, I'll accept that now, though. But yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm the dropout. But um, when I ended up back in in direct mail and um, uh, wound up doing um, data architecture for direct mail and targeted, uh, you know, using GIST systems to, you know, pull targeted uh audiences for direct mail and architecting databases or you know direct mail or data sets that were being used in direct mail and doing mail merges and all that good stuff um in my early what technology what, what technology was it back then oh god um microsoft what was it access access, access and um you know, XMPy was a lot of what we were using for print um, at the time. Um, XMPy was great. It was a Xerox product um, that allowed for um, dynamic images to be created, um, digital images and things like that to be created and, and put on uh, direct mail pieces, postcards, things like that. Um, we were using a technology called Easy Pearl, which would allow for personalized URLs to be a pen, uh, created, I, I used to create personalized URLs for, for direct mail pieces, yeah, and, you know, QR codes and crap like that. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's okay, you can swear on this show. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that, because I have a mouth of a sailor. Um, but, uh, and if you've been around me for 10 minutes, you know that. Uh, but yeah, so, um, yeah, I was, you know, it was honestly not that different from what we're using today i know that sounds funny but um in 2007 um we had a client that came to us and we're like we want to try this thing email and see if it's productive for us and um the president of the company's like do we know anything about email i'm like i have a website it's just a single page website with a mail merge isn't it i mean i think i can do that and um, so he's like, Jenna, try it. Here you go. <laughs> Gave me technology. And I'm like, all right. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Spent a lot of sleepless nights trying to figure out how to make that work. 
<laughs> and awesome. um, yeah, we were using X and Pi or, um, and Easy Pearl to actually send emails with. And um, there were a couple other systems. We looked at Acton. Um, Acton, I, I used for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I say that, you know, facetiously, but um, uh, and then there were a couple others. And then um, in 20, 2011, um, the X and Pi was just not suiting the, our needs. Um, we had, um, we needed timeliness in reaching the inbox and they were, it was taking, you know, it would take 24 hours for a million records to go out. So if you were trying to do a last minute, Hey, we got to sell last minute, last call, you know, you're, you're selling but in emails might hit that inbox after the sale is over. That's a problem. And so I started kind of poking around at the back end. Cause that's what I do. Um, and, and on, on X and Pi and, um, I saw exact target, exact target everywhere. And I'm like, what are they doing with it? So I Googled exact target, you know, like what's exact target. And I discovered exact target. I discovered Salesforce marketing cloud. And I was like, wait a second, X and Pi is just sitting on top of exact target. They're using their send relays. And at the time that was a program that exact target offered that don't, like, like send grid or spark post does. Um, they still offer that program. You can reskin them and resell them. Um, but um, at the time exact target was doing that. And so I was like, it was not exact targets relays that were going slow. It was the compilers on the XMPy side to create those dynamic images and things like that, which was really cool. This was before Movable Week existed. So this is really cool, right? Um, but it was taking this them is a like, time. Yeah, this is like a marketing cloud app exchange avant la lettre, <laughs> right? Before, before it was a thing, before it oh, was yeah, Salesforce. App exchange wasn't around, Trailhead, Trailhead wasn't around um yeah this is exact target we're, we're talking you know before salesforce interesting bottom. i didn't know there were apps that were even layered on top of that i just learned something oh man you can do anything online <laughs> that's true i mean yes you can make custom oh. things but i didn't know comp i didn't i didn't realize companies were using its infrastructure was this some kind of uh white labeling or was it just you know they made yeah. an app and Ah, it, it, okay. Yeah, it was it was white labeling, and I don't know exactly how to describe it because I'm not a I'm not a web developer, and I'm not an app developer, and I'm not trying to be. Um, you know, but um, they basically were they had built an application that set that were just using it's kind of like the reseller thing, but it wasn't they weren't using the platform; they were just using the relays to send with. XMPy had built their own platform. And they were using exact targets relay. So it's I don't know if that's white labeling exactly. Um I, I think that's more of a, an app. It's like App Exchange. Yeah, it's it's an app sitting on top of it. Yeah, exactly. So it's an app sitting on top of their relays, you know, and sending it from it. So and it, you know, it's funny that you say that because I, I worked on a project not too long ago. Um that was a <laughs> brought me back to my roots man i remember developing one of these back in like 2005 it was horrible um speaking of xm pi um <laughs> but um uh it was a it's a web to print solution where it allows for marketers just to go in and select like a postcard background and layout and stuff and choose the the area the geolocation area um but it, this was an app for, it was an app for print product, you know, like I said, it took me back to my mm -hmm. old days. I remember building out one of these for, for firehouse subs, believe it or not, back, back in the day, you know, to, before I was an email, um, I hated that thing. That was horrible. It, <laughs> you know, this is, everybody's like, how, how, email is so much more complex. Yes. Email is much more complex, much more complex than web and having that web dev back. <laughs> yeah. Reach out to, woo. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, emails, emails, a puzzle. I don't know. I just have a love for it, you know? So it's, it's, yeah, I get to put together puzzles. On and it. so you kind of stumbled into exact target by uncovering it was actually what's laying behind X and Pi. Yeah. What made you say, oh, I'm going to make a career out of this thing. I, you know, I, I didn't, um, 
<laughs> yeah, did, did you just like, but uh, did, you know, did you just stumble into it? Is it like gradually you became more and more specialized and it was just, you know, there was a high demand and then you had uh, fun solving those puzzles? Is that how it went? I've just rolled with it. Um, I, I say I've done most of everything by accident. That's why I'm, a, a, you know, we talk about being leaders and I'm a, I say I'm a reluctant leader because I'm kind of nomadic by nature and, um, and, I like to just kind of go where, where I, I'm curious, you know, see where my curiosity leads. And it's because I'm curious that I have this career that I've established by accident, you know I mean? So um, I'm not very goal oriented, I guess you could say, um, sure. which is funny, you know, because everybody's like, oh, you have to have goals to be successful. Not necessarily. You just have to have real curiosity and ambition, right? You know? And wanna oh yeah but but i would say curiosity uh for for certain people that we hire uh mm -hmm. sales on top of you know most of all curiosity i would say is like a super important trait but oh, yeah. but really anyone in consulting as well um yep. yeah <laughs> your, your uh your um self-proclaimed title reminds me of this maybe a little known science fiction book called um illusions the adventures of a reluctant messiah Maybe it's. Uh, oh, I've not read that. I'm gonna have to look that up. Ah, uh, thank you. It's You're interesting. Welcome. Yeah. Well, I say that because I say I'm 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 kind of a reluctant leader because I might decide to jump over a cliff and I don't want people to necessarily follow me because they might not see the parachute I'm holding. Would you, you know? say you have a higher risk appetite? Um, you know, I think it depends. That's contextual. Um. And I say this having just left Vegas um, and only lost seventeen dollars, um, having set a budget to gamble only twenty, and um, I was there for four days. <laughs> that <doesn't... laughs> that's, that, that's an interesting um, um, data point, you know. To yeah, to exactly. That so I, I, it's, that's why I say it's contextual. Um, I, I'd say I'm risk averse when the when it's not statistically possible for me to win when I can't see a known win, you know what I'm saying? Um, so like mm -hmm. gambling, is like too much of a risk. The house is going to win. They are there to take your money. Okay. If you think you're going to win the chances <laughs> hubris, man, don't, don't, don't get into that. Okay. You know, but, um, but yeah, so uh, as far as careers go and pushing the borders of what I know is possible in like the platform that we, we work in, um, mm -hmm. I would say I'm a, I'm a risk taker. Um, I'll jump over the cliff. Yeah. Um, so, um, but is like, that what I brought said, you to, like sexual, so, yeah. is that what brought you to how to SFMC? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, kind of. Um, so, how to was um <laughs> how to is not my idea and i uh, we we are all founders of how to and that's why you know some of us don't have the founder some of us have co-founder listed but we are all founders of how to i'm trying to like empower everybody um i know we're all co-founders but we're all founders of how to there's six of us that founded how to and it was born of a conversation a, a conversation in email geek slack um where we were kind of complaining about the lack of support and documentation for the marketing cloud. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we field a lot of questions, especially those of us who have been doing this for, you know, a length of time um, from folks that are told they can do something when they're sold the product or when they're sold the platform. And then when they get in there, they find it's not as easy as it was described to them in the sales process. And um, so we decided to kind of had fun with it. You know, we, we decided that we were like, okay, well, let's change this. Let's like, you know, well, we didn't want to just make another document repository or another, you know, blog site, you know, anything like that. So we started doing these challenges um, and kind of challenging the community. Uh, shout out to Cam Robert in Australia. Cam came up with most of the challenge ideas. Um, and at the time he was on leadership. Um, he wasn't one of the founders, but he was on leadership at the time before he joined Salesforce. Um, 
and he's still a, a prime contributor, but he came up with Baby Shark, um, which was our most popular challenge. Um, and I got to shout out to Leslie Higgins, and she's going to hate me for doing this, but shout out to you, Leslie. That Baby Shark that you created was incredible. It's on our website. Go see it. She actually out lyrics of Baby Shark in the shape of a shark using AMP script. It was yeah, what, what, what is this Baby Shark? Can you elaborate a little bit on what that is? Oh, yeah. So Baby Shark was one of the challenge, one of the coding challenges that we did. So one of the things that we were complaining about is like the out of the box, you know, what Trailhead teaches you is kind of limited. You know, you get to a point in Trailhead and you're just like, okay, well, I want to do more. And I know you can do more with the platform, but you can't learn it off of Trailhead. So we were like, okay, well, let's do code challenges because it doesn't teach you AMP script on Trailhead. There's SSJS, which is a, a another proprietary library and marketing cloud isn't taught on Trailhead. Um, and so we were like, let's let's and at the time there was a deficit of highly technical techniques that were being talked about and it was only like a small little group of folks that were talking about them you know the mvps basically and a couple other folks you know right right around that that didn't want to take the mvp title and um so we decided you know let's open this up let's you know highlight some other people in the community and like do these code challenges so we did these the, like I said, the, the favorite one was the baby shark challenge where we asked people to output the lyrics of baby shark um, using AMP script. And we had three challenges and I'm going to forget the third one because I always do, but it was, it was, we looked at your code and we reviewed the code and um, we were looking for the least number of characters so the shortest code, and I think that was like 156. And yes, they used 156 characters in their code to output the entire song of Baby Shark. So that's kudos. And I forgot who that was, but kudos, dude. That was incredible. Right. Um, and that was the biggest challenge. Everybody was really going for that one. And then there was the, um, I think, the most creative approach that we had seen you know, to outputting it. So if someone had used some functions that we just didn't think of, you know, or um, when I say we, we're, the, the people who were grading this were Adam Spriggs, who wrote, co-wrote, you know, the 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 AMP script guide and um, right. Greg Gifford, myself, and I've, I've taught AMP script for years. Um, so um, you can find me on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so... And we can definitely make sure that we add a link to your YouTube channel as well oh, as to um, yeah, it's how the to how to SFMC. SFMC channel. It, it you know just add that. Um, but um, I'm, I'm bad at self promotion. <laughs> That's why people just now finding out of me about me. Um, but yeah, so um, but yeah, and so the people we've been writing AMP script for eons, you know, and we're we're well versed with the functions that are available to you. So we were looking for creative uses that we hadn't thought of or we hadn't seen as as our group, you know. And then um, I told you I'm going to forget the third one because I always do. But yeah, so I think it was most innovative. And, uh, but anyways, there were three challenges. And then there was Leslie's. <laughs> and we didn't have a category for Leslie, but my God, it was just like, because that was like 600 lines of code because the way she had formatted it and everything to be the out the shape of a shark printed out on the screen it was just beautiful it was beautiful uh, but yes yeah, so we gave her a special kudos you know award and we gave out prizes for that one I say we gave out vouchers for certifications and um I think Greg's book um automating the marketing cloud is Greg's book I'm, I'm pointing to my bookshelf back there because it's yeah. one of those um <laughs> and then uh I can't remember what we gave out, but we, we, we tried to give out prizes, you know, and, and tried to encourage the audience. But what we found is that we were leaving out a lot of entry level folks and low level folks that wanted to participate in our reindeer games. And they couldn't because they hadn't learned those, those things yet. And we were looking for those highly technical solutions. And so that wasn't fair, you know, and we wanted to make sure that we were bringing everybody into the community. And we had already started the Slack space and, so we decided to kind of shift focus well, the website was up, you know, and we, we still post to the website with <laughs> as much as we possibly can. And anybody who wants to contribute, please send us your stuff. We're happy to publish, um, <laughs> publish your things on our site and get you out there, get you exposure. Um, but, uh, 
but there's 10 of us in leadership now and we're all very busy and, you know, um, more, our... most of the activities uh, is in, in Slack now. I yeah, know it's so still a very vibrant community. Yeah. So we hang out in Slack, come talk to us, ask us questions. Um, mm. But it's not just us that ask questions. We've created a community that's self-supporting. Um, everybody mm. answers questions. So you get feedback from all different perspectives from around the world and uh you know different experience levels which is hugely important because even folks like myself who have been in the platform for a decade or longer and i hate i hate calling us experts you know i know we have the sme title and everything in there but um expert is i mean the platform is changing all the time you know there's there's new stuff coming out i just discovered oh, something sure. earlier today that i'm embarrassed to say i just discovered um you know so uh, well, i, I want to go i want to go yeah. into that of course but uh, i will i will first say that i can testify that uh just um how helpful this community is uh because just recently i asked a question because um so here's a context um for deselect engage module we're exploring additional ways or new ways to suppress communications from marketing cloud and i remember asking that question in the slack chat and i was really surprised by by how extensive people answered it point me in the new directions and ultimately i also found new documentation which of course i, I tried to um share and like sort of gave a conclusion of my findings so hopefully other people who would you know search the same thing in a in that slack would find it but i will say yes i was i was really pleasantly surprised by by how fast i got um responses but uh yeah it's, it's quite something thank you we're, we're we're very proud of our community and everybody that participates in it thank you all for your participation and asking great questions and answering great great questions and answering every way you answer um because there's no wrong answer and there's a thousand different ways to do something and you're teaching us us dinosaurs as well <laughs> so um <laughs> So thank you. So so now I have to ask uh, Jenna, what did the what did the the dinosaur discover today? What was the thing that you discovered? God, I'm so embarrassed. Okay, so I don't hit send. You, you can often. send email with Marketing Cloud. Oh yeah, I discovered other, that. Other, other than <laughs> direct mail. <laughs> um, I don't hit send very often, and so um, I discovered that when you do a guy. Guided send is not a, not terminology in email studio anymore, by the way. I discovered that. Um, so when you do a guided send mm -hmm. from content builder or from email studio, um, it now creates a user definition or user, um, um, a UIS. Um, um, user initiated email? Yeah, it creates a user initiated email yeah. and stores the send definition there. So if you, and I didn't know that um, because I don't do guided sends generally or send from email studio. Generally I'm sending from automation studio or from journey builder or from a cloud page or from an external source, Wait, you know. Send sends from a cloud page? Mm -hmm. Oh, you would do that too? Interesting. I hadn't thought of that option. Okay. Oh, but so sends from a cloud page? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What's a... Uh... Wait, we'll, 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 we're segueing. We're, we'll go into that one in a second. Uh, okay, I'm but, like, uh, good Lord, man. That opens like, this cloud pages is is like, if you want to talk about my favorite part of the platform, it, it's either cloud pages or automation studio. And I don't know which is better. Well, cloud pages is just like endless code. So whatever you can conjure, whatever you come can up think with. Of, you can do, yeah. you can make but, it. You know? But why would you do a send from a cloud page as opposed to oh, lots of reasons. anything else? You ready? Yeah yeah totally that's why we're here <laughs> lots of reasons i mean um you have a web form that you collected information from and you want to send a, a, a email telling them that they submitted this information or something like that you would trigger it from that cloud page why not you know um uh that's the number one use man that's the number one how, use. how is that different from um it used to be called triggered sent now it's called transactional sent how is that different or is it the same thing it's it's the same thing you're using the transaction okay. Yeah, I descend, you know, I mean, you're, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you're just doing it from a cloud page, from an act, a, a script on the cloud page rather than, you know. Okay, got it. Like for a second, I thought you were thinking about building your own, what you see is what you get editor fully in a cloud page. Okay, which I so guess I've done that before too. 
Okay. <laughs> or like a distributed marketing setup or something. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can. Because yeah, there's, can do that. and it's it's funny because I actually was advising a client not six months ago um, on how to build an application out that did something similar to that. It wasn't a WYSIWYG on a cloud page, but it was um, uh, a form selection that wrote to a data extension that triggered a send. Um, so they, they didn't actually have to go into the platform and do it. So It seems like a great way to avoid paying for user licenses, which we are not recommending here, by the way. No, of course. no, no, we are not. Let's change subjects right now. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's get back. So we, we segued on a segue. So before <laughs> cloud pages, we were talking about how, how you discovered that guided scent was no longer called guided scent. And I'll confess, I also still refer to it as guided scent very often. Thank um, you. So it was, Thank that you. was the main, that was the main discovery. Yeah. And discovering that it wrote to a, it wrote a send definition or, you know, that, that definition to the user initiated send area so that you can go and look back at it because in the past you didn't have a send definition. If you, if you sent through a guided send, that was it. You know, you couldn't go back and say, okay, well, I know it was this creative and I know it was this data set and I know it was, you know, sent using this classification. You, once it was gone, it was gone. You know, you, you couldn't go back and check those things unless you hit the API or, or one of the reports, right? You know, so right. um, now that it, the platform does that for you and creates a, that send definition for you and houses it under the initiated send screen is like huge. I mean, you can get some of that information from the tracking screen too. But at the same time, having that send definition to refer back to, so you don't have to go and like dig and like do all this mm. other stuff, you know, look for the job ID. Um, it's nice. Yeah. 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 So, and, and, and of course, we all love Salesforce, but we also know that, you know, they are a little bit notorious for changing their names. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I used to be uh, a huge gamer, and some of these games, especially online games, they have these sort of patches where they kind of constantly change the rules and the mechanics just to keep the, the players engaged because you have to relearn everything. I, I wonder mm -hmm. to what extent that's maybe like deliberately done by software companies as well, just to make sure that there's something I new to learn. I about that. Keep us on our toes. Honestly, I don't yeah. think it's because they're trying to in, in do that. I honestly think it's because they have turnover internally themselves and lack of documentation. Hey, we're all fast paced. Some of us don't have time, you know, and it, we all fail when it comes to every, every, engineer, developer, I don't care, architect, whatever you want to call yourself, has failed when it comes to documentation at some point in their career. And that goes true for the people who build the platform too. And when you have turnover and they're going in there and they're trying to figure it out and they say, oh, but this way would be cooler. And they've never actually used the platform themselves. Or they never read the documentation. There's another one. That's another one that happens too. Okay, let's put it back on the end of person doing it. They don't read the documentation or they yeah. or they don't ask questions because they think they know they understand it. And then they go in and like break something. Remember that that outage a couple years back on the East Coast where the the internet went down on the East Coast and it ended up being someone like at, I think it was at Google or someplace like that that had pushed the wrong code base and Oh, I don't know about down that. For like four years or five, or not four years. Oh my God, that would be that would kill everybody. It was down for like. Oh, four I'm, hours. I'm probably too European to to remember that story. Yeah, I, and I'd have to I'd have to Google it. But anyways, it, it poor guy. <laughs> it, who knows what he didn't read the documentation or what he did? But he got fired. You know, I mean, so well, it's like. <laughs> I, I feel just, and this really goes for for any role, but especially marketing operations. Um, people are very smart and so they're even more likely to want to do things their own way so don't yes. come in and maybe someone has come up like with great automations but no one bothers to actually read the documentation and then they start solving for the problem that has already been solved yeah. um, one recent example that i remember was you know in your crm mapping lead sources and original lead source and just because of the transition of people, like the second group of people started developing something from scratch, it was already there. It was already there. Just and they just know, didn't know. Yeah, redundancies oh, yeah. created over from from you know people turning over and transitioning roles and things like that. You know, so um, we're human. We make mistakes. So, totally, absolutely. Um, and as long as we're willing to learn, we, we will become better exactly. as a species. Exactly. 
Um, so anyway, I mean, interesting track, uh, uh, career track, right? You, you, um, you know, begin in direct mail and you just through sheer curiosity and, and ambition, you find yourself in marketing cloud. Eventually you, you start um, a group how to, um, I'm curious to what extent have you been still been able to tap into your direct mail routes? I know there's some direct mail options out there. There's um, Optalize on the Salesforce app exchange is, is one. Of course, many will do their custom integrations with uh, local uh, mail providers. Have you seen something like that? Like direct mail? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, you know, there was that app exchange offering that I was talking about a little while ago that was a direct mail you know, provider that was a journey builder application that you can go in and, and um, it plugs into journey builder. You can send emails and direct mail pieces from journey builder using this application, you know? And so that was, that was cool. Which one is that? If you can name it. Uh, they're not public yet. So I'm, I'm just going to keep the name to myself until I, I don't know if they're going to brand with that name or, you know, okay. if they're going to brand with another name. Um, but when it's released, I will, I will shout it from the rooftops because it's pretty cool. Um, yes. but, um, when it's on App Exchange, I will shout it from the rooftops. You know how that is. It's got to go through security review and all that good stuff yet. And you know exactly how that goes. Um, so. that, that's true. Although to the credit of our engineering team, uh, we have um, done three. No, we have done a total of four applications. And we've always passed on the first time, which our uh, partner manager on the Salesforce site tells us is uh, unheard of. Yeah, I was going to say that's really, really good. That's that's kudos, man. Kudos. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, um, shout out to the product team. Anyway. Yeah, seriously. Um, but yeah, so um, but I they are not actually in front of the security review yet. They're still working out some of the kinks in their application. Um, it's in beta with one of their clients right now, so they want to make sure. Right. And and maybe I just realized because we're saying a lot of things that maybe not everyone in the audience realizes. So the security review that we're referring to is uh, if you would make an app for Salesforce and you want to have it on Salesforce App Exchange, which is like the app store for Salesforce, uh, you need to go to a security review by Salesforce, which is notoriously complex to navigate. So and or it just you know, hard. It should be. I you agree, know, you're I agree, passing I agree. a lot of data through there. There's a lot of security. Oh, yeah. Security. Um, you know, so there's a lot of ramifications if something goes wrong. So, you know, I mean, they have every right to scrutinize the apps the way they do and thank goodness they do for, you know, the end users and for us engineers so, um, or architects. So, Jenna, in your prior roles, what was your most uh, interesting project in SFMC so far? Free lending. And that actually goes back to direct mail too. And it's kind of funny. Um, and, uh, man, I say it right away. That was, I worked on that and shout out to Aaron Graves and she is no longer Aaron Graves. She got married and she's not going to see this anyways, because she's not really working in our field anymore, but shout out to Aaron Graves um, <laughs> for, for working with me on that hell project that turned into something beautiful. Um, it was, it was, um, and I say it was a hell project because we had an end goal and date set and that, that goal, that goal post kept moving <laughs> and it ended up becoming like a two-year project, but uh, we started out, they wanted a speaking of cloud pages and doing everything from cloud pages. Um, and at the time it was, it was, um, oh my God, it wasn't cloud pages. Um, what, what did they want to do? Anyways, it was the other, it was before cloud pages existed. Um, but um, they wanted to create a portal for mortgage lenders to go in and enter in lead information for loan providers. And then right. the loan providers, and they wanted it to trigger emails um, to the loan provider with the list of leads, and then possibly trigger an email or a direct mail piece to those leads from that loan provider. It wasn't, it was supposed to be a simple little just here's a place to upload your leads and it's going to automate and send out everything where it needs to go. Right. It ended up, we ended up building an admin section for it, for them to go in and pull reports from. And we had reports populating on the screen and then exporting and everything else, you know? And, um, but yeah, it was a really cool, it was an, it was an environment when we got done. It was a, it was a 
email, direct mail environment when we got done. But we were using a direct mail service called Lob, which I think is still has an offering on App Exchange, and um, or now has an offering on App Exchange. Mm-hmm. The time we were using a cron job um, to send them data every day, you know. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, it almost uh, sounds like you you're making almost like your own uh, Salesforce community or Salesforce portal or. It was a it was a portal. It was a full portal. You know, um, they didn't go into marketing cloud themselves. They didn't want to, um, and they didn't want to have a bunch of users in there. They wanted to have one admin that went in and communicated with me and had me do everything. For them. So, <laughs> <laughs> but and I was happy to do that for them. You know, I'm, I like I like seeing how far you could you could push your limits. I mean, and back in the day, people were you know they didn't have there wasn't like a lot of content management systems for websites and things like that. So you would get these requests to build out these portals on your ESPs or on the platforms that you were doing. And we had those capabilities and we still do, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, should you do it is another thing. Um, That portal was not the most secure. Um, This is before there were a lot of security standards that we have today. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) And I would do it differently today, you know what I mean? But it was a it was a good learning experience and I'm proud of what we produced. Um yeah, it's fascinating yeah. how how far you can go with custom development on marketing cloud. Just keep being being amazed at uh, the use cases that you can sometimes see. Yeah, and um still have documentation for it somewhere. Oh, I think oh, look at that. You you actually wrote the documentation. Oh god, yeah. I, back, I used back, to write really back to our good, earlier I, topic. Excuse me. I used <laughs> to write really good documentation. And I believe in telling people to write really good documentation. Yeah. And I do write it for clients who pay for it. Fantastic. So if there's one takeaway from this interview, it's documentation. Write your documentation and read it. And read it. Mm-hmm. Um and use AI. About- AI, man. Use it. It will help you write your documentation. I'm using it oh. to write documentation. Use your use your chat. GPT and Llama and whatever you want to use to write your. Oh, that's that's interesting. I hadn't considered that. Um, well, since since you bring up the subject, um, let's maybe switch gears to to AI and uh, let's start with ChatGPT itself. So, um, yeah, um, you you use it to write documentation. Tell us a little bit more about that. Like, if if I want to write a piece of documentation, how should I go about that using ChatGPT? Okay, what prompts so do you use? I actually like writing technical documentation. When I say technical to- documentation, I'm talking about um, post post-build documentation. So you've created a process of uh, whatever, uh, you know, portal, whatever you're creating. And then you go in and you document it after everything's been tied up and tested and buttoned and QA and, you know, everything's perfect. You go in and you document it and you create some training manuals. Um, I like doing that. So I, I actually don't mind doing that. I'm, I'm using Chad GPT to help me with grammar um, help me with scenarios I might not edge cases that I might not have seen um, you know because you can say hey are there any edge cases in this process you know and load up your load up your documentation and it'll be like oh you missed blah 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 you know what if someone does xyz um, but what I'm really using it for is um, blueprinting um, prior to the build um, and creating user stories for agile processes and testing scenarios mm-hmm. Because I hate doing documentation in advance. Um, I don't like being, I feel like it it restricts me from being able to be creative in the build process. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. so, so this, for, this is for what uh what what I would maybe call like your design, your blueprint, yes. is how you call yes. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so, uh so if you can ask a question about that, um doesn't working through your blueprint can that not be a source of creativity? Because as you're phrasing it, you're iterating through it, you know, your brain's pumping. Um, Absolutely. If that's your process, absolutely. If that's your process. (laughs) I like to go in guns blazing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And, um, you know, some people have different processes, you know. Um, So I worked with a developer in the past that liked, or an engineer in the past. Uh, You know, I use those interchangeably. So if I'm I'm not trying to disparage anybody's role or architect, whatever you want to call yourself. But I worked with a developer in the past that liked to do what they called slam it into other code. So they would build, you know, if they were working with another developer, they would build their code base over here. You'd build, this other person would build their code base over here. And then they would take it and slam them into one another, you know, and and see what you would get. So that was their process, you know. My (laughs) process 
is I like to go in and just start building. You know, I know the goal. I like to know the goal and have a clear idea of what the goal was. I like to know the pain points, if there are any pain points. And I know what I like to know what the client and user stakeholder, whoever that person is, expectations are for the project or for what you're building. And then I like to go in kind of open and just go with it. You, you know what I'm saying? And just kind of, because I might think of a better way halfway through the build than I had already outlined. Yeah. However, I have them sign off on um, risks, rewards, um, you know, and I like to, I like to have clients sign off on blueprints, um, process, you know, let's, and key like, okay, we're going to have meetings at X, Y, Z, you know, your whole timeline and everything like that, you know, um, those are the doc, that's that, that pre-build documentation that I can, and the user stories for testing, testing scenarios. Um, I love, I love using Bard, chat, GPT, Llama, whatever you want to use. Um, yeah for for those because you can say you know i want i need to build out a journey that has five touch points that um has this exit criteria or whatever you know and you can literally just type that in and i need five user case use user stories around that you know with scenarios you know and you can just literally type that in and then see what it outputs and then you can begin to engineer your your prompts that you provide to chat gpt to better suit your needs so after you do it a few times you can kind of kind of you know train it to you're, you're training yourself too because you're teaching yourself how to yeah. prompt it to give give it what you need in the way of i've seen a prompt go around the web that basically says uh you know after you give your feedback dear chat gpt uh, also tell me how i can write a better prompt yes Yes. And that, that's a, that's a really good one. Um, you, you got to remember though, that, and I say this with all the love, you know, um, this is AI. It's, um, it's not sentient. It can't think for itself. It's only as good as what we tell it and what we code it. Cause it's just code. What it's doing is statistical analysis at scale in real time at incomprehensible speeds, you know, that we just cannot do it. And, and so, and it outputs things that are just silly sometimes. And so <laughs> you, you're, you're going to have to edit it. You're going to have to work with it. You're going to have to massage it into what you need it to be. It's not perfect because we're not perfect and we created it. Um, I, I really like the, uh, the metaphor used to like a uh, statistical analysis at scale it's uh it's it's it sits very close to our company's mission statement which is uh elevate engagement through human intelligence at scale and i think in a in a world of uh, full of ai um i think especially fair five years ago that was still far away from the, the day-to-day well, it wasn't of- though it wasn't though because <laughs> i'm gonna get on my soapbox for a minute ai was first the first ai or the first logic engine conditional engine was created in the 1950s that's when the term artificial intelligence was coined um Mm -hmm. so it's more than 70 years old neural networks the term neural networks was coined in 2012 um that's that's a little bit newer newer of a terminology but that branching neural network algorithm we've Mm -hmm. been using for a long time siri uses it um all your devices your personal devices use it um, marketers have been using AI for 20, 30 years. You know, I've created algorithms myself, predicted engines before Einstein was around to do it for us. Einstein is AI. How many years have we been using Einstein now? And before Einstein, it was before it was purchased by Salesforce Marketing Closet, it was Evergage. And I don't know how old, when Evergage came into existence. Um, so what is new is the open source of the code, you know, the open source base of the code, the model it's using to do these analysis is new. You know, it's a, like I said, it's a branching model. It's no longer just one series of conditional statements. It's multiple series of conditional statements that it's creating for itself. Mm -hmm. That's new. The neural network is creating its own questions and logic that that's new. That's cool. That's badass. 
Um, but but, um, but despite but, all the newness yeah. and despite it has been uh, around for a while, there's a human yeah. at the center of it. There Someone is a human has at to the prompt. center of it. Someone has yeah. to prompt it. Um, it can get out of control if people use it for nefarious means, you know, and that's where we get into like the, uh, you can philosophical BS aside, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, is it human? Is it sentient? You know, humans, ask, whatever, mm. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel, it doesn't have a nervous system. It's not, it's not human. Um, it's code. Um, <laughs> it's just code. That's all. Don't, don't make it God. It's, it, you know, it's not going to grow legs and start walking around and take over and start eating us. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so just that thought. Well, uh, like, opinions uh, vary on that. And sometimes from, from super smart people, uh, like uh, I know Eliezer Yudkowsky is one person who speaks up very strongly against AI. Um, but then you have, you know, founders of Netscape like Mark Andreessen who yeah. embrace it much more fully. Um, I think it's going to be fascinating when it's happening, but um Maybe before we dwell more on that, uh, I want to before we, as we as we uh, um, are about to wrap up our call uh, soon, um, I want to just dwell a little bit on the marketing community itself, the marketing cloud community, because uh, oh. you've had such a big impact there. Um, what was the best part? What was the best part of that marketing cloud community? What do you like the oh, most? Man, the people. I, I love the people. I love being. Oh, man. So. Just a thank you to everybody who sends me messages throughout the day and weeks and um, just little and shows shares their self with me. Um, you make you are my community and everybody, you know, I, I have a lot of folks that are just like, hey, I did this cool thing. Check it out. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Keep doing it. Um, and keep sharing with not just me, but with the community at large, share it in the Slack space, share it in general, share it in, in random, whatever you want to share it in, keep sharing yourself. Um, it's you that makes us great, you know, and that you are the best part of our community is everybody, everybody in it and everybody participating together, you know, so all, I'm all kumbaya and all, but yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite moment at Connections this year, 2023? I don't know. Um, probably seeing Dan Levy. Um, you know, he was, you know, the keynotes are always hit and miss at Connections and um, the the special keynote guest, you know, guest speakers. I've been really lucky. I've seen some really cool ones over the years at Connections. I saw John Lewis and actually, you know, my favorite two were at World Tours. They weren't even at Connections, so I shouldn't even say that. Oh, no, John Lewis was Connections in Atlanta. I'm sorry. I keep mixing that up, um, but um, saw John Lewis speak, but seeing Dan Levy, um, uh, his, you know, um, so, oh, wow, okay, it, it's very personal, but um, he, he really means something to a lot of us, and he might not know anything about marketing, and he he showed that he didn't, he knew very little about what we did, you know, um, in his keynote, um, but he, the way, when he talked about acceptance and accepting in everything and, and everybody and how we're all just, you know, nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody's just trying to figure it out. Um, I think that rings true and that hit really close to home. So that was probably probably my favorite part about connections was seeing that and seeing everybody. You know, it was it was nice to get to see everybody. You know, we we don't get a chance to see like I got to meet Tony Zipanzik for for the first time in real life. Um I got to meet you for the first time in real life. Um, right. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, if you're going to talk about like content, it was probably the Dan Levy thing. If you're going to talk about like but it was just actually seeing everybody and getting to have that communal, you know, in that community environment and the the vibe of the zhuzh, um, you know, yeah. the energy. So it was good. Yeah. I will always remember how just how much he likes a simple newsletter. I think that was a strong statement. <laughs> at okay. A like- you know, I agree with him. I love my newsletters. I, I thank you for saying that, Dan Levy. I do not think they are passe. I know I'm I'm on the pro newsletter side. I, I and me and a, a colleague at Brightwave used to argue this on a regular because she she did a whole presentation about how newsletters were passe and they needed to go away. Um, but I know. no, I love my newsletters. Keep sending them, please. All right, there we go.
that's how we end it. <laughs> well, Jenna, you've given on a bunch of advice throughout uh, this conversation. Be curious, document, and newsletters are great. Um, but uh, do you have any other parting advice to marketing cloud newbies or maybe, you know, veterans, who knows, uh, marketers in the early stage of their career, that sort of thing? Um, don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. If you don't want to do it in public, do it in private. Um, and every single one of us that have been around for a long time, and I'm speaking for everybody from Elliot and Adam Spriggs and, you know, um, Greg and all the MVPs. Oh, Susanna, she's wonderful. Um, you know, myself, we all love when people reach out and ask us, questions even if they're silly you can ask us like hey is there a way to turn the sky green on tuesday using the marketing cloud no but you know we're happy to try to help you try to figure out what your client can do in reality so um you know just yeah reach out you know ask if it's in public it's in, it's in private just ask we're all still learning you guys saw what i learned today um there we go yeah, we all make mistakes. You know, so. Great. Well, thank you, Jenna, uh, for taking the time today and for doing so much for the marketing cloud community. Uh, your uh, passion and curios curiosity is very inspiring. Um, so thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to Heroes of Marketing Cloud. If you enjoyed the show, please do subscribe so you'll be automatically up to date about new interviews or other content like this. Um, if you want to know more about Deselect, go to www.deselect.com. Thank you and have a great day.